Good to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Right. Um, it's quite interesting, you know, what we have seen over the years, especially as it concerns hygiene and toilets. Nigeria, you know, has in any way educated this population as to how important it is for us to use toilets the right way. Thank you very much. Um, well, <laughs> talking of Nigeria, well, Nigeria has educated the populace, but not enough. We still have a very long way to go. We have a very long way to go because uh, we have the WHO standard, you know, for ending open defecation in all countries of the world. So I would say that Nigeria still has a very long way. Okay. Um, are there laid down plans or rules to help govern this um, particular day on how people should um, put up the habits of good hygiene when it comes to um, toilet usages? Yes, of course. There are laid down plans. Let me start with legislation. Okay. You know, from the federal level to the local government level. There are, there are legislations guiding, you know, uh, sanitation and hygiene. Okay. You understand? Yes. In fact, the, the, what it should be is that every household should have a toilet. In addition, we have public places like markets, parks, and some other open spaces. We should have also toilets in those places. And of course, by that, you will agree with me that this open defecation we are talking about will end. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about laid down rules, yes, there are laid down rules. There are public health laws in every state of the Federation, which also encompasses the issue of toilets. You understand? Okay. So there are laid down rules. How much of these rules have been followed by, by people? Well, I think the question should be how much of these rules have been implemented. Because when you make a law and you don't implement it, you understand, you will not achieve the desired result. So to a very large extent, I think, uh, let me use the Enugu State as an example. We have these public health laws that have been implemented to a very large extent. I remember that Udilo government has its own bylaw on this issue of uh, uh, toilets. I have read it, and I believe some other agencies in Ugu State have such bylaws. And then coming to implementation, we have um, people who call environmental health officers in every local government of Ugu State and even in Nigeria. They are the people that are statutorily you know, uh, uh, it is their responsibility to implement these laws. You can agree with me that you can see some of these officers doing what we call house-to-house -house inspection. They go from house to house looking out for some of these nuisances because if you don't have toilets, it's, it's a very serious nuisance, you know, and some other uh, public health nuisances. Mm -hmm. So e even though we don't have enough of them. That is even why when you ask some people, do you know who an environmental health officer is? They don't know. Because actually we don't have enough of them. Okay. You understand? We are, we are, we are also uh, asking the government, both state and the federal government, local governments, to employ more of these uh, trained environmental health officers so that uh, this issue of sanitation, uh, open defecation and so on and so forth generally would be achieved you understand okay. so. so in cases of open defecation have there been any form of sensitization on how to on how to avoid this talk to people even build toilets you said you have officers that go from house to house doing inspections i haven't witnessed any Thank to you. the best of my knowledge but cases where these houses have bad toilets or no toilets at all what uh, impact 
um, does the government do to, you know, provide these things in order to avoid cases of open defecation? Question. Thank you very much. Well, the just like I said earlier, there are public places like markets and some other places. The government can also engage private people, what we call public-private partnership, to construct toilets in these public places. Then coming to our private homes, uh, they are, just like I said, there are bylaws and even uh, state laws that require that you must have toilet in your house, in your home. And, you know, making a law is not the issue, but implementing the law. And that's why I made mention of environmental health officers who go on house-to-house -house inspection, requiring that you construct these toilets if you don't have them. And, of course, the rule is that when an environmental health officer comes to your place and there's no toilet, the environmental health officer will advise you what we call health education. We tell you, look at the importance of this uh, uh, constructing this toilet. Because when people defecate in the bush, you know the implication. Mm -hmm. the, the, <coughs> the rains or the waters carry these things to, you know, some water bodies that are sources of our drinking water. And of course, you know the implication. Cases of diarrhea, cases of cholera, and so on and so forth. Other gastroenteric problems. So, you now advise them. Then, we also serve what we call an abatement notice. Abatement notice is a notice giving you some time, a time frame, for you to construct that toilet. Then, after that period, and this toilet is not constructed, we may even require to serve you court summons. Yes, we may require to serve your court someone so that the court will not compel you to do that. And in addition, the court might even give you a fine for not constructing that toilet. Okay. So, in most communities and local governments, the environmental health officers enforce this rule. But the, the, the case of Enugu State, we don't have enough of these environmental health officers. And that's why we're urging the state government to employ more trained environmental health officers. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a particular significance of this World Toilet Day? I mean, we've had this World Toilet Day uh, every year. One would have thought that these days that mark these significant days are usually are used to educate and inform people about the importance of um, toilets. But do you think that these World Toilets Day have served its purpose? Yes. It has served its purpose because November 19th is the actual World Toilet Day. And why do, do we mark this day? It's how to sensitize the populace. You understand? If you had listened on that 19th uh, November, uh, NTA, I mean, you would have had some talks on uh, World, World Toilet Day, ending open defecation even radio programs and so on and so forth. So I think it serves a very useful purpose to sensitize the masses, for them to know that uh, open defecation is very, very harmful to us. Because if we end open defecation, we will end the issue of diarrhea, the issue of cholera, and other related uh, diseases. Okay. All right. Um, the World Toilet Day in itself, in even the practice of using toilets, is also something that is quite related to cleanliness and sanitation within the, within the society. Yes. Do you think that the SDGs, the, the sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, that um, getting the toilets uh, activities right would help to achieve these SDG goals? Yes. In fact, the SDG, the number six of the SDG goals is specific. On the issue of this uh, toilet ending open defecation. You understand? Uh -huh. The SDG 6 specifically speaks on the issue of this uh, construction of toilets. So I think with enough sensitization, uh, community mobilization, health education, and so on and so forth. I think the SDG uh, goals 
especially that uh, sixth goal could be I, achieved. I, I feel it's not sustainable. Like we can't achieve it. We can't achieve the the, the, the number six SDG before the so called I think it's twenty thirty. Yes. Uh, you know. So I mean, the reason I say that is because if you go to the north, virtually everywhere you turn is a place where people just defecate. Yes. Uh, I mean, and some of sometimes some of these availability of toilets also has to do with availability of water. Because you cannot have toilets at home when you don't have water to flush. A place like Enugu that's largely not a place where you can get water easily. Yes. Everybody's got a borehole within their com community or sometimes even within their, their, their space. Yes. Not everybody have the, 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 um, the, the wherewithal to dig a borehole within, within their community or even within their home in order to use, you know, for, to, for flushing. Because you have to have toilets, then, then flushing. Yes. So if we don't have that, how do you think that we're going to achieve SDGs number six <laughs> by 2030? Yes, it, it, it could be achieved. You know, it's, so this is depends on the political will. You understand? And I believe that is even why this sanitation uh, uh, activities is domiciled in the Minister of Water Resources. Uh, if you look at the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, I think the aim of the federal government is to achieve this goal. Because just like you said, you cannot separate water, the issue of water, from sanitation. It is very, very difficult. You understand? I listened to the um, I, li I, I listened to the registrar of uh, Environmental Health Registration Council, uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed. I listened to his speech during the Water Less Day. I mean, he actually made it very clear that with that political will, both at federal, say, and local government le level, it is achievable. You understand? It is highly achievable. For instance, in a, let's use Enugu State as an example. I, the government is doing all it can to make water flow in Enugu. And people don't even know the chain effect of having water in a place like Enugu. The chain effect includes the issue of sanitation. You understand? Uh, if we have water running in the taps, I mean, it, it becomes easier to implement, uh, you know, some of these rules. You know, many people have also s called for some sort of review of that promise made by the government of Enugu State about water flowing in our homes within 180 days of its resumption, but that hasn't really happened. And so because it hasn't happened, you still have these deficits <laughs> of sanitation problems yes. and, uh, and also issues with toilet that we would actually have. Actually, it has not really happened, but I believe that he has that political will. Because if you look at, if you look around, you can see that I think the reason why it has not really started happening is that we have old, you know, pipelines that are not really good, that he intends to change. And I believe before long, water will start flowing in Enugu. And if water starts flowing, you, I mean, your guess is as, as good as mine. I mean, sanitation activities will be better for it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's hope. In as much as the, the governor is doing his best, also the populace, the lead, we also have our roles to play. You understand? We also have our roles to play. Yes. If you go to some communities, and talking about construction of toilet, they don't even know what they are talking about. So we also have to uh, sensitize the public, which I believe uh, the consigned authorities are doing. And just like I spoke earlier, we have environmental health officers who are doing this job, but we have a very insignificant number compared to WHO standard. You understand? So. Uh, this is also an opportunity to ask the state government, to appeal to the state government, to employ more environmental health officers in Enugu states. I mean, people are out there are looking for jobs and seeking for means of employment. So how is it even a problem that there's, there's your short staff on environmental officers? Uh, well... You say people are looking for job exactly. everywhere. Yes, the, the issue is the government uh, are not really recently they are not employing the appropriate staff. You understand? They are not employing. We have so many 
environmental, train the environmental health of roaming the streets. So that is why we are appealing to the state government. You know, everything depends on the on your priority. If the state government says, okay, our priority is health, just like when the governor came in, I think he allocated over 15% of the budget to education. That has never happened in any state before. So it depends on your priority. So if he feels that this is quite important, I believe, and I know that our governor is means well for the state. I know that before long, he is going to employ uh, environmental health officers. Because just like he asked me, the sixth SDG goal is achievable. You understand? It's achievable. But he doesn't agree that it's achievable. No, I... <laughs> he doesn't agree. The, and I told him that it's achievable. Okay. You understand? Because of what I am seeing. Exactly. I, I don't, I don't see it you know, being, being achieved. Yes. I talked about the political will. With the body language of our governor, I'm talking... I'm being specific about our state. Enugu. Yes. Not across the country. Not across the because country. Because the SDGs would have to... Actually, if you're going to do by the SDGs, you're going to go by by states and then by country yes so if you're going by states if we still lack water up until this moment that we haven't had because you also stated that you can't separate sanitation from water availability, availability. Exactly, exactly so we had, we don't have water so how we show that in another you know five six years, years or five years or this year is already finishing <laughs> five years time you were sure of having you know water in order for us to have yeah, that's why i talked about the political will the body i think in nigeria i think some local governments are already open the uh, defecation free mm. yes some local governments have been certified free of open defecation in nigeria not in and even some states no not in yet and that's why i said see if it is achievable in any other state or local government in nigeria we can achieve it in any new state. Board. We mm. can achieve. It. The only thing is that we we are going to embark on uh, advocacy, you know, with the state government, the relevant ministries. And when I say we, I'm, we have a body called Professional Association of Environmental Health Officers. We also have a council called uh, Environmental Health Officers Regional Council of Nigeria. These bodies, they engage on, in, in advocacy, meet the political leaders, tell them, look at the essence of this, look at why we should do this. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I believe the governor is a listening governor. If some states in Nigeria can be open, defecation free, why not Enugu State? Okay. You understand? Why not the 17 edges in Enugu State? So it's achievable. It's achievable. And I believe with the governor's body language, I mean, at, soon we'll have water running everywhere in Enugu. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm very optimistic about that. <laughs> what, what role do you think that local authorities have uh, to play in th things like this, like local government authorities, the Igwe's, um, even the local unions? What role do you think that they play in, in things like this? Yes, the, I mean, the roles they play is, we can say the, the roles are enormous, you understand? The community leaders, the Igwe's, they can also sensitize their people on the essence of uh, uh, sanitation. sanitation and even constructing toilet facilities in their homes. And of course, the environmental health officer, when they come to any community, they go to the community leaders first of all. You understand? Before even embarking on a house to house sanitation. So they have an enormous role to play. The community leaders, these are the people that even uh, let the high authorities know that we are lacking this. We have councillors in the community, even members of the House of, uh, State House of Assembly, they have roles to play. Asking the high authorities, look at what our needs are. Please assist us. And we have a body called the uh, uh, WASH. Water and Environmental Sanitation Agency. We have it in Enugu State here. They also play enormous roles. They have experts also in the agency. They have environmental health officer. They have other environmental management uh, uh, consultants and experts. They also have uh, engineers and related uh, professionals. Okay. So they also embark on all these duties. Um, not to 
deviate, but um, according to statistics, Japan ranks number one when it comes to toilets, sanitation, and the rest of it. What innovative practices, what technology ha do the government have in store or in plan to aid the promotion of proper sanitation? Thank you very much. Well, when you talk of innovation, you can even observe that <coughs> we have in Enugu now, we have what we call mobile toilets. Oh. Yes. Okay. If you go to Akpara Square in any event, you will see mobile toilets stationed in strategic places. Okay. So that people, when you are pressed, you just go in and ease yourself. And now we are advocating that the private uh, endeavors should be uh, involved. That is why I talked earlier. I talked about uh, public-private partnership because the government cannot do it all, even if it is at a token. The other day I went to uh, Old Park Enugu here, and I felt like easing myself. How much did I pay? I think about fifteen naira yes. or thereabout. Yes. So if we can install these things in public places, even transient places like Okpara Square, like maybe where you are having a crusade. I mean, you bring in these uh, mobile toilets, and of course, you will not see things littering around and all that. So, I think it, I, I, I see it as an innovation, okay. Mm. And I believe that the government can also go a step further. further. Yes, now, what types of toilets do you think are, are very hygienic? Because we know that types of toilets, the ones that in the village you see most of the time, people mm -hmm. dig. Uh, pit holes or uh, pit toilets and then the one that's modern one with the white basic and some yellow and some uh, you know purple yes. and the like so i'm wondering what type do you think is the most hygienic and what type do you think should be installed in villages specifically you mentioned earlier that toilet must be situated in your house but yes. i've been to some villages in in this Enugu where the, their toilets are far from their homes they have to walk a distance walk, yeah. in order to go and you know and it, and, and it's a latrine type of because they don't want it close <laughs> close to the house <laughs> well the point is that in our rural communities they dig what we call pit toilet it is no more in vogue you see at a stage we encouraged what we call vip toilet you understand vip toilet this vip toilet has uh, what we call vent and even other facilities that make it a step uh, better than the ordinary pit toilet. You understand? Mm -hmm. But now, we're encouraging people to install this water system. But just like you said, we don't have that uh, adequate availability of water. You understand? So, people can, in the rural communities, people can construct these VIP toilets. Well, it costs money to, to establish. It not, not, not much. I think oh, it costs as, pit toilet. as yeah. much as a, a, a consulting a, a pit toilet. VIP means uh, ventilated improved pit toilet. Oh. So you can now see that the difference between that VIP and the, the ordinary pit is that uh, ventilation. ventilation. That's just the difference. You understand? So we're going to to do that. But I know that in due course, when... Uh, we have this uh, availability of water adequately. I mean, the water system is the best. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Are there other things you want to add to whatever discussions that we've had today, especially as it concerns the toilets? Well, yes. The what I want to add is that in due course, let's say uh, November 19 next year, uh, I will urge even women groups youth leaders, community-based organizations to help in sensitizing people on this issue of uh, constructing toilets, ending open defecation. Because whether we pretend about it or not, if you go to rural communities, I mean, it is quite serious. And it is in these rural communities that people go to the stream to fetch water. I'm telling you, people go to the stream. So you now see people defecate in the nearby bush. Even in the stream. Even in the stream. Even in the stream. Even in the stream. And people still go there, collect water and drink. Mm -hmm. And they don't know the implication. Mm. 
Wow. Have a long <coughs> way to go. Thank you so much. I truly really appreciate your insights on today's program. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we've been speaking with Eusebius. 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 Yes. Offer. And he's giving us an insight into the importance and the implications of uh, proper hygiene as it relates to toilets. Very recently, towards November 19, there was this interesting um, thought about World Toilets Day. And it's just basically to bring awareness to most people across the world, especially this part of Africa, that it's important for you to be hygienic and, of, of course, to defecate properly. Thank you so much for watching. It's been one interesting time with you this morning. And we're back tomorrow, same time, same station. My name is Charles Pius. And Thank I'm Christy so Rowland.